Warzone has stretched its life cycle over five different games, and with that, we've seen over 200 different guns. Of those guns, I guarantee there are a handful you don't remember or even use. Today, I wanted to share with you the entire history of forgotten guns in Warzone. These are the guns that you may not believe were ever in the game. Maybe they were so bad you never touched them. Or perhaps gimmicky beyond belief and a desperate attempt to get the player's attention. Some were actually pretty useful, but just not necessarily at the forefront of the meta. Comment which of these you want to make a return to Warzone. You probably remember this one, and technically we still have a crossbow in Warzone today since we had a crossbow introduced in Warzone 2, but to this day, no one uses it because it's nothing like the Warzone 1 crossbow. It even seems like the Warzone Win Challenge YouTubers seem to steer clear from the crossbow today. That's how irrelevant it is. But let's go back to Warzone 1 where it was first introduced. There were a ton of different tips you could put on it, which made it a lot of fun. You had the gas tip, which was definitely the worst of the bunch. Just left a little gas trail after the fact, dealing very little residual damage, but kind of like covering a small area. This was objectively the worst one. I don't know why you would ever use this one. Then there was the Thermite, which essentially just shot Thermite grenades at your opponent, and the Thermite would stick around for a decent amount of time, which was honestly really annoying. But most notably, you had the Explosive Tip, which was hands down the best attachment for the crossbow. The longest period of time, you could one-shot anyone, no matter what the range was or where you hit them or whatever armor they had left. The crossbow would always break armor once you hit them, so since their armor was gone, the Explosive Bolt would just finish them off, which actually made this a lot of fun to use. The best part about this is if they were remotely injured and you hit a headshot, they would immediately go down from the bolt itself, but then the explosion would finish them off when they were down, giving them no chance at being revived. If I'm not mistaken, this is the only way you could truly take someone from up and alive to spectating with a single shot of any gun. It was honestly so much fun running around like Norman Reedus just catching body after body. We later got the R1 Shadow Hunter, which was the Cold War crossbow, which honestly couldn't even hold a candle to the Warzone 1 crossbow. You couldn't really customize the bolt whatsoever, and it focused more so on raw damage, so not near as fun in my opinion. I think they just wanted to include a crossbow in the Cold War, and so since it was Cold War, it was also available in Warzone, but really not viable whatsoever. Later, we would get the Warzone 2 crossbow, which I already mentioned, and for a while, it actually did one-shot any player. However, in like Season 3 or Season 4, I think, every player got a 50 HP buff. When they made that change to Warzone, they didn't change the crossbow's damage whatsoever. I'm not sure if that's something they meant to do, or if they're just trying to get rid of crossbows entirely in the meta. Which, mind you, they've never been meta. They've just been very niche and somewhat useful. I don't understand why they made this change because the velocity is truly so unbearable so even if they did buff it back to one-shotting, I don't think a lot of people would use it still. I think if they did make it one-shot and maybe add it to ground loot, it'd be a fun little thing to have, you know, get you out of a certain situations and whatnot, but obviously you would never run it in your loadout. Bring back Warzone 1 crossbow. So technically, the first time you could get the minigun was through the extremely tedious Bunker 11 easter egg in Warzone 1, which I'm gonna go on a limb here and say a lot of you didn't do that. Those kind of things are just a little bit too much for me. The next time it was readily available was just a month later when they added the Juggernaut Royale limited time mode. If you remember this game mode, there would be a handful of loadout drop like crates dropped into the map for any team to secure, and if you did, you not only got Juggernaut armor, but a minigun to go along with it. I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the gun itself rather than the armor that went along with it since this is a guns list. Technically, you didn't have to to have the armor because if you killed a juggernaut they would drop the minigun and anyone could pick it up afterwards. Once this mode was no more they added the chance to get minigun's from bunkers as long with juggernaut armor as well. The gun was actually pretty good and had way more range than you would think for a minigun. It was kind of like the grenade launcher in a way where when you saw it you immediately fought an internal battle with yourself whether you should pick it up or not just because of how rare it was. It was super slow which the way warzone is played today focusing more on movement and mobility doesn't really fare as well but at the time it was pretty dang good and ever since then there have been a handful more ways to get the minigun. Most most notably in the black site in Warzone 2. Since every black site is guarded by a juggernaut, once you defeat the juggernaut, he drops the minigun for anyone to pick up. Then in Warzone 3, yes, you can get the minigun in the same exact way, but since black sites and strongholds don't spawn in each game, I'd even go as far to say they rarely spawn in, the minigun is not near as common as it once was. I've only gotten the minigun in Warzone 3 once, and it was during the Slay Ride Resurgence mode after I murdered Santa Claus, and honestly, it wasn't doing it for me. I only used it once, so the minigun in Warzone today, in my opinion, really doesn't matter because I have just I haven't really experimented with it too much. But I do wish there was a guaranteed way to get the minigun in Warzone 3 today. Sort of like the ray gun on Fortune's Keep because now it's a much more rare gun to find today, hence why I think a lot of people have forgotten about it. It was nice that in any given battle royale match on Almazar, you could get the minigun if you really wanted to grind for it. 
I had completely forgotten about this gun until I was making my entire history of sniping video. This gun was seriously so wild, and I would love another gun like this to make a return to Warzone. For starters, it was semi-automatic and when one shot to the head at any range, which is something we haven't seen since Warzone 1. It would also two-shot body shot at a considerable range, which is another really good stat about this gun. Aside from being an okay sniper, what made this gun so special was the crazy ammo types you could use. But the thermite ammo, which similar to the crossbow, would essentially shoot incendiary-like rounds at your opponent, but they lingered way longer. You could down someone with a headshot, and the thermite would then kick in after the fact, which would leave them with only two-thirds their health while being down, which was a really cool feature. Kind of similar to how the crossbow would finish someone off if you downed them with the bolt itself, but not quite as good. But where the Rytec really shines is its explosive ammo, which was something we haven't seen in Warzone since. Not to be confused with the explosive ammo we have today, which is pretty much only good for making any bolt-action sniper one-shot at any range. Explosive ammo for the Rytec would actually leave an explosion behind after impact. This was crazy because you could shoot near or around someone and still deal damage to them from a super far range. The only drawback with these ammo types was that its velocity and bullet drop fell dramatically, and with the Rytec already not having the greatest velocity, it wasn't exactly a cakewalk to use. What I think they really had in mind for this ammo type was destroying vehicles, which was absolutely crazy. It pretty much one-shot any vehicle aside from the Berthas. Being able to snipe a helicopter from a distance, but instead of having to shoot the pilot out, you're destroying the entire thing was pretty crazy and something you just can't do anymore. It was almost like having a hit scan RPG. Eventually, they nerfed the Rytec to not be able to one-shot headshot at all, which was kind of sad since it really wasn't easy to use in the first place. I, for one, didn't find the Rytec, even with the ammo types broken, simply because it just wasn't all that viable. But still, just a fun gun to use in general. If anything needed to be nerfed, it was its vehicle damage. That's the only change I would make going back. This was probably one of the silliest guns we've ever seen added to Warzone, if you even really want to consider it a firearm. The fun thing about the nail gun was that it was actually really good. It had the fastest time to kill in the game aside from any one-shot sniper. It only took four shots with this thing to kill someone, which was just crazy. The major drawback was that it didn't support any attachments whatsoever, so what you had was what you got. With only 20 rounds in its magazine, it was extremely difficult to get more than one to two kills per magazine. Go on some of the craziest iron sights of all time and you had the definition of a high-risk, high-reward gun. This gun was was dominating Rebirth Island for the longest time. It was eventually hit with some damage nerfs, but that was pretty much it. I think that's the perfect nerf because I think it's still used to down someone with four shots just about any range, but nerfing that made it still fairly balanced. Since you had no customization and just the 20 round magazine, it was still way better to run a traditional kitted out SMG, especially if you were playing trios or quads. However, if you were feeling slimy and tricky, you could definitely still make the nail gun work in certain circumstances. It's always fun to see a gimmicky gun added to the game, be broken for a while, then get nerfed to a balanced state and still be usable somehow. All right, well, if you thought the nail gun was gimmicky, buckle up for this next edition. The EX-1 was a laser gun that was originally in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Well, for whatever reason, they decided to add this gun to Call of Duty Vanguard of all games. For the sake of continuity, I think they could have at least added it to Modern Warfare 2019 since you could easily write it off as like a prototype gun from the future or something. But for some reason, Raven thought the high-tech laser gun used against spaceships and zombies was a better fit for a World War II setting. The gun itself really wasn't anything special or really all that good whatsoever. I will say the customization was pretty crazy and since it was technically a Vanguard gun, it allowed for 10 attachments, so I guess that was pretty fun. You could kit it out to be a sniper, which I totally forgot about before making this video, and had I known that, I definitely would have included it in my History of Excitement video because it actually was a true one-shot sniper. Yes, that's right, the only assault rifle in Warzone history to be a one-shot headshot. It used this weird, like, charge-up shot magazine, which would result in the one-shot headshot from any range. Were there better snipers at the time? Absolutely, but having this as another somewhat decent sniper option in Warzone is just hilarious. As far as as usefulness outside of the sniper, I really didn't see a point in using it. At range, its recoil was awful, but another really weird thing about this gun that I couldn't get over was that it left the laser trails when you were shooting someone, and that made it really difficult for tracking somebody, in my opinion. I don't know, I could never get over that. It kind of like just like took up the whole entire screen. It's also worth mentioning there was a three round burst variant with one of the magazines as well. This was also pretty useless. Overall, the gun was not worth using, in my opinion. This was also added to the game during season five of Vanguard, which is just before the release of Modern Warfare. Fair 2, and I personally saw it as a desperate attempt to get people to play Vanguard before its inevitable demise. <laughs> 
I bet a lot of you completely forgot that there was even an M16 alongside the launch of Modern Warfare 2. It's one of the only guns in Warzone today that goes by its actual name in real life. Which is a shame because the reason I say you probably forgot about this gun is that it's probably the worst assault rifle in Warzone right now and honestly has been since the launch of Warzone 2. Also, I don't think this gun has ever been in the ground loot rotation, so that certainly isn't helping anyone remembering it either. The M16 is such a quintessential gun for not only video games, but specifically for COD in general. It has usually been in the forefront of the meta in previous games, and even the Cold War M16 had a severe broken state during the burst meta. The whole burst thing they just can never get right, it's either super broken or just useless. I mean, even when I would grind multiplayer, the Modern Warfare 2 M16 never saw any viability. I swear, I still don't have this gun leveled up because of how useless it is. There's just a lot of things they could do to fix this, you know? They could make the recoil crazy and the damage insane, or lower the recoil and give it some moderate damage. But seriously, right now, it might take six bursts to down a fully plated enemy. Please do something about the burst gun. So the manga, manga, whatever, was added about halfway through Modern Warfare 2's life cycle, and it's a gun that I don't think anybody was asking for. The Deagle has always been a universally hated gun in Warzone, not Call of Duty, but specifically Warzone. It's a high recoil, high damage gun. If you hit two headshots, you're gonna down them, but other than that, it's really bad. I think everyone can agree this is the worst starting pistol in Warzone. But what if I told you there's a Deagle that's fully automatic? That would be the GS manga. It's pretty much the same gun, only more recoil, less damage, and a higher rate of fire, and that's about it. There's really no place for this gun in Warzone right now, nor has there really ever been. Could maybe argue that it's good for underwater combat in the final circle on Vondel, but other than that, there is absolutely no reason to be using this gun. Similar to the M16, I don't think this gun has ever been in the ground loot rotation. <laughs> This is another one that you might remember just because of how recently it was added to the game. Blockman Shroud is a burst MP5 SMG that was added in Season 5 Reloaded of Modern Warfare 2, which to me just felt way out of place. We just talked about how trash burst guns are, but this is the last time we've ever seen any burst gun do a decent job in Warzone. I think it's weird that we've had the Modern Warfare MP5, the Cold War MP5, the Lockman Sub, aka the Modern Warfare 2 MP5, then in the same game, they decided to add pretty much the same exact gun, but just a three round burst variant. To me, it just screamed redundancy and just like the EX-1, this was added to Warzone 2 just before Warzone 3, which I think was yet another desperate attempt to get people to play Modern Warfare 2 before it would die. Kind of like trying to get people in the nostalgia feels like, oh, the MP5 is back in Warzone, but really it wasn't. However, the gun was actually pretty solid for the remainder of Warzone 2, but ever since the Modern Warfare 3 integration, it's become trash alongside all the other Modern Warfare 2 guns. Another reason you may have remembered this gun, aside from it being added to the game recently, is that it was in the ground loot rotation throughout all of Season 1 of Warzone 3, and if I'm being honest, I thought it was one of the worst guns you could pick up. For some reason, it only had a gold variant, and this is a gun I would avoid at all costs. But that's the entire history of Forgotten Guns in Warzone. If you're still watching this video, you must have liked this video at least a little bit, so maybe consider subscribing. Go ahead and comment which of these you completely forgot about. Let me know if there are any guns you think should have been on this list as well. I would love to hear y'all's opinions. Check out some of my other Warzone history videos. Stop by one of my live streams right here on YouTube. Don't even have to go to another app. Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy. And if you like, to leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment if you like and thank you so much for watching.